Hey, imagine starting an airline. Yeah, I know. Well, today's guest and his two mates have done just that. And you can fly as often as you want for one pretty reasonable monthly fee. Well, I said, welcome to a small business marketing show where successful small business owners share their souls to take your marketing straight to the lead. Now, here's your host, Mr. Tim Bowie. And welcome back, listeners, to another episode of Australia's number one marketing show. I'm your host, Timbo Reed, but you, yeah, you, so much more importantly, you're a motivated business owner and you are ready to crank out some great marketing to build that business of yours into the empire it deserves to be. And if a show was ever going to help you do that, it's today's show. Boy, oh boy. Hey, listen to this. We go behind the scenes of Australia's newest airline with co-founder Luke Hampshire. Or is that Hampshire? Don't know. Should have asked him. Got some amazing feedback from a long-time listener who's had some great results from some very simple videos he created on his phone. Got an inspiring quote yeah, from Virgin's Richard Branson, which kind of makes sense because I'm interviewing a guy from an airline. Feedback from a listener who is also a bit of a rock star. Like, I mean, literally, a bit of a rock star. And... Uh, I would suggest hanging around till the end, although I know you can fast forward, as I've got some exciting news about some upcoming guests. Hey, today's show lovingly brought to you by two businesses that, hey, they want you to succeed. Net Registry, they get your online marketing sorted, so you can check out some very exclusive packages for you, the listener of the Small Business Big Marketing Show over at netregistry.com.au forward slash Timbo. We've got a Ripper SEO package. That is search engine optimization. And we're also brought to you by, yeah, they're back, Key Person of Influence, a 40-week incubator for motivated business owners just like you who are ready to take the next step. And you can grab a free copy, a free hard copy, that is, of their book over at keypersonofinfluence.com forward slash Timbo. Hey, team, as per usual, there's marketing gold. Yeah, dripping from the ceiling over here at Small Business Big Marketing's HQ. So let's get stuck right in. Do you need a speaker for your next conference? Recommend Timbo to your event organiser. Or better still, book him. Tim Reed. that's R-E-I-D dot com dot A-U. Oh, why did I just do what I just did? Before I came in to record this episode, I turned on the six o'clock news. What was that about? It's just bad stuff. It should be called bad news. Murder, car crashes, war. Seriously, why bother? But then, after all that bad news stuff, it just became absolutely laughable with a report on Brumbies. Overseas listeners, Brumbies is a national bakery franchise. And they made the news. They've caused an uproar with a proposed uniform that they want their staff to wear, a T-shirt actually, over the upcoming Easter period. You know what the the line on the T-shirt said? Yeah, you're ready for it. This is big news. Big news. The line read, we've got the best buns in town. Oh, gee, controversial. And it made the news. I mean, that's a bit of a fun line. It says what they've got. A slight double entendre, I know. May lead to a bit of a smile, hey? A little bit of Benny Hill humour. But guess what? The minority have spoken up and Brumbies have had to recall all the T-shirts. What a joke. Really? I mean, well done to the Brumbies marketing manager for just going with the line. Getting the T-shirts printed. I bet he or she didn't expect a two-minute story on the 6 o'clock national news. Hey, there's two lessons here. Number one, don't watch the news. Spend your time creating wonderfully helpful marketing to grow that beautiful business of yours. Lesson number two, don't let the whinging minority stop you from creating marketing messages that have a bit of charm, a bit of personality, that put a smile on the dial of those who may want to buy from you. 
Oh, goodness me. Fortunately, I then moved across and had a quick look at Facebook. I know, I'm off it. I'm off it, I promise. I didn't like anything or comment it or I didn't make a post, but I watched that wonderful video, People Are Awesome, 2015, and everything was okay. Righto, off my soapbox. Let's get on with the show. Hey, as I said, upcoming fantastic interview with a young man, Luke, who's decided to start an airline in Australia, as you do. But before we head over to Luke, I have got some listener feedback. Uh, It was left on the iTunes store, the Apple iTunes store, and it's from a fellow Andy. He says, fueling the addiction, five stars. I'll make this short and sweet, Timbo, he says. A fantastic podcast that fuels my addiction for marketing. Good on you. What a great addiction to have. Working as the manager for the band that I play in and also now running my own podcast. Nice. I constantly get inspired by the numerous knowledge marketing bombs being dropped in every episode by Timbo and his inspiring guests. Yeah, I must say, the old guests, they come in, Andy, and they... They just drop the bombs all over the place. Sometimes I don't even think they know they're doing it. Hey, I just sit back and go, quietly, thank you. Andy goes on to say, I have a long, long way to go before I achieve the elite status in marketing. Don't be so harsh harsh on yourself, Andy. However, it's exciting to know that the possibilities are truly endless. Keep up the great work, Timbo. Andy Dowing, you ready for this? Bass player of Australian metal band Lord, L-O-R-D, and host of the Andy Social Podcast. Hey, Andy, first of all, thank you, mate, for a very wonderful iTunes review. I encourage everyone to do that. It really helps me, seriously. Now, mate, I have gone and checked out this Australian metal band of yours called uh, Lord uh, on iTunes. And I notice you've got a number one, your, well, your number one hit is a Kylie Minogue song. I didn't expect that. That wonderful Kylie song, On A Night Like This. Take a listen to this, T. Like like oh, hey, not bad. I like Kylie's version of that song. Yep, I've said it. I'm on the record. I don't mind a bit of Kylie, but I quite like Lord's take on it too. Hey, pretty heavy. What I can also tell you, though, team, is that Lord have some much more appropriate songs for an Australian metal band. I checked uh, I checked their song list out. Other songs they have, Going Down, hey, there's a title for a metal band. Another song, Limb From Limb. And their piece de resistance, I Am Death. Yeah, much more metal than Kylie's On A Night Like This. That said, I'd love to hear them do Kylie's I Should Be So Lucky. Oh, I love Kyle's. Gotta love Kyle, she's been good for Australia. What a marketing machine. Love to get her on the show. Anyone know her? Introduce me. Tim at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. Love that. Tim meet Kylie. Kylie meet Tim. Oh, I'd go weak at the knees. Righto. Here we go. Luke Hampshire. Hampshire. Co-founder of Fly Airly, which is a very, very different kind of airline. How different? I hear you ask. Well, put it this way. Fly Airly flies only between three of Australia's main cities, Melbourne, Sydney and Canberra. And it's a membership-based pricing model, which is is the interesting part, in which they charge us a flat monthly fee which allows us to fly as often as we like. Kind of like that. It's like the old Denny's, all you can eat. Definitely a cool idea. Uh, Definitely a brave idea. Now, Luke and his two business partners had just received their first bit of national media coverage the day before I recorded this interview. So I started off by asking Luke to explain just how crazy his day had been. Um, the 
last two days have been absolutely uh, ludicrous, but we love it. What created the craziness? Um, it was an innocent article in the Fin Review. Jamie Freed, who's, who's a great uh, aviation uh, commentator, uh, I guess, or journalist, probably a better word, better way to put it, was interested in the idea, wanted to write about it, put up the article, got printed the following day, and uh, pre- practically every main media channel wanted in on the story as well, which has totally blown us away, <laughs> even surprised Jamie, who's very experienced in media. So, um, yeah, it's, it's been a great day. We, we, we've, we've got sign-ups. We've got a heap of people subscribing to follow the progress. Um, but you know, we've just, we've been able to get some serious attention in the public about what we're doing, which is really hard to do. Mate, mate, it is it totally is, and and you've you've nailed it. So just to be clear, um, yep. that article in the Fin Review two days ago was not, um, it wasn't timed. It was really Jamie, this this uh, this journo wanting to get something out there. Is that right? Yeah. Look, she just came off uh, holidays, and I, I sent an email to her and said, "Hey, would you, you know you're ready to write about early?" And she goes, "Yeah, let's chat." And, and are you are you guys genuinely surprised? Yep. At the attention. Yep. Absolutely. We 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 read the article. Uh, I think it was pu- published uh, Sydney Morning Herald just prior to. Uh, or sorry, the evening before mm. the Fin Review came out and um, just went, oh, that's cute. We got a couple of website visits, the odd email, and we're like, yeah. oh, well, it's a start. We're out there now. Uh, and then the next day it just... I'm going to call you on it, Luke. In the days of uh, Airbnb and yep. Uber, yep. You, you are now, you have founded a disruptive business model that is not yet proven, but, you know... For, for all intents and purposes, it's disruptive. Yeah. It's, it's exciting. You, mate, you, of course people are going to be interested. It's great. Yeah, we're wrapped with the interest. I mean, um, it, it is, I guess you can call it a, a disruptive model. Has it been proven yet? In Australia, no. In the States, absolutely. Um, mm. You only have to look at Surf Air. They've been running three to four years. And I know, you know, we, we've had a lot of uh, naysayers out there like every disruptive uh, <laughs> idea has, you know, saying it's California. California's not a, a, a Australia. But I think Australians rely more on air travel than the guys in the States because our centres are further apart. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we, we love a good new idea, early adopters. So, listen, before we get – Nate, I, I even have the word in front of me, yep. naysayers. Now, I've never used that word before, and I don't know about you, but yep. <laughs> extraordinary that we've used it both in the last 30 seconds. But explain what Airly is. In a nutshell, Airly is an all-you-can-fly membership airline. Uh, we're, we're like a hybrid. We're, we're, we're giving our members access to private aircraft, eight-seat private aircraft, and, and putting it on a schedule, and we're saving members' time. So your average round trip Melbourne Sydney, uh, which for us is Essendon out of Melbourne and into Bankstown in Sydney. So for overseas listeners, these are these are, I'm going to call them suburban airports. You can call it that, yeah. They're, they're smaller executive airports. Secondary. Secondary is a good way to put it. They're not uh, as congested. I mean, you only have to look at Sydney and look at the lineup to depart mm. uh, during peak periods. Nightmare. And and if you fly into Sydney regularly, you'll you'll experience the. Uh, the holding patterns you get to fly yep. uh, over the ranges before you come in. So we, we provide that alternative for those who are incredibly time savvy uh, or time conscious and those who are budget conscious. Yet, no, we're not a budget airline. Mm. However, our membership is an all-you-can-fly service. So you can go to your CFO or accounts department and say, this is what my travel uh, budget's going to be because, you know, for, for argument's sake, I just fly Melbourne, Sydney. Um, there's no added fees for parking. There's no added fees for baggage or changing a flight or anything. It's all inclusive. You've got some education to do, haven't you? We're, we're educating as fast as we can. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Those who have been watching the States know exactly what we're on about. Uh, those who have joined up already, you know, we've been calling every member, thanking them, giving them the chance to ask us oh, any questions that. that they have, and they love it. They, uh, our, first, our member number one nearly fell off her chair um, I love when, it. I, when I rang her, but... They're, they're all over it. They know exactly what we're offering and, and they absolutely understand the, the convenience factor, uh, the time uh, or the way we will save them time and um, provide an exemplary service to them. Promise me you'll never lose the idea of calling a new member. I think it's brilliant. Oh, no way. Uh, whether we've got one member or a 1,000 members, they'll be getting a phone call. Yeah. We're, we're, otherwise, we're just another airline, right? So totally. One of, one of our big... Uh, I call it token taglines, is we have members, not passengers. A passenger is, is any number, whether you're paying the most out of everyone on the plane or the least, they're getting you from A to B, they're, they're doing their best to get you off the plane and uh, onto the next passenger. We have members. We're creating a unique yep. community. 
Yeah, okay. So just to be clear, on, on the idea before we move on, Luke, you've got yep. um, eight-seater planes. They're going yep. Melbourne to Sydney out of secondary airports. They yep. are – it's a uh, it's a thousand dollars to join early. It's 2550 bucks a month to fly as often as you want. Sure. How, where's the catch? Where's the catch? There is none. <laughs> um, so basically, it's all you can fly. Uh, how we work is at our base level membership, we give you what we call flight credits. So there's two flight credits at our base membership. This allows you to to reserve a seat on two one-way flights, so we can call it a round trip. As soon as you've flown your first flight, you get a new flight credit to use, So, and you can repeat that process as often as you like. Mm-hmm. Um, so we are all you can fly. However, we have got that restriction on there just so you know one member doesn't block out a seat for every flight for every day. Just for the yeah, sake yeah. of flying, you know. Uh, well, there'll, there'll all be, always be those ones. But I remember as a backpacker going to Denny's, the all, all you can eat restaurant, and getting. I was about kicked. to say, you only have to look at when <laughs> Sizzlers hit Australia. I think people were eating twice as much as what they normally would. But yes, um, <laughs> our members are, are travelling because they need to. Um, yeah, they're not travelling just because they can. Why only eight seaters? Oh, look, you, you can definitely go larger. It all comes down to a few things. One of which is cost. Uh, if we're going to provide a competitive price point, mm-hmm. which is maybe three round trips last minute or two business class round trips a month, yep. uh, we need to make sure that we can find an aircraft that's economical, that's comfortable, that's sleek and obviously safe. Yeah, uh, yeah, and yeah, the King yeah. Air 350 good. is perfect. Oh, safe, safety is number one for yeah. us. So the, the 350 is perfect. Uh, Wheels Up in the States have put in an order for over 100 for their service. Um, Who has? Which is uh, a company called Wheels Up. So... They're more down the line of ad hoc charter right? Um, or sort of hiring your own plane. But the King Air is one of the best-selling models so in the world. So what are we talking? Are we talking like a, a comfy leather seat, a Jason recliner type seat or a... Absolutely. So Get the, out of the, here. The, no, the, the leather seats, they recline, they <laughs> they, they twist, uh, sorry, they pivot so yeah. and they recline. Um, they do everything that any, uh, probably more than what a, a seat can do on a, on a larger aircraft. They're, they're a super neat plane, and as far as price points concerned, they're perfect. The flying doctors in Australia use them. The Air Force use them, so they've got to be good, right? Otherwise, they wouldn't be using them. Yeah, t- totally, totally. I'm I'm a frequent flyer myself. I'm I'm a platinum member with Qantas and Virgin. Um, yep, mate. I love my points, and I love my my lounge. Yep. What what happens there? We totally understand that, and, and we know we're not for everyone. I guess you know, uh, with a disruptive model, you want everyone to be part of it. But mm-hmm. we totally accept that there are those out there who are chasing points, who are chasing the status, uh, and, and who, who enjoy the lounge. We're not for them. Yeah, we're right. we're for those who who are really w- interested in the the idea of saving time and having incredible convenience. I mean, Melbourne. If you flew Melbourne Sydney only, you're really not getting any points from it anyway. Um, mm. And we actually see ourselves as a complementary service to an airline. You, you feel like you've, you're ideal for the. It's like that business. Like business people are serious, but like yep. there's that there's that particular person that's yep. just like almost like you guys. You know, it's like this the startup, the the head down, bum up. I'm here yep. to do business. Get me in, get me out. I'm not interested in all that hoi polloi. I just want to get where I'm going and do what I need. Get done what needs done. Exactly right. We're, we've got the movers and, sh- uh, and shakers, I guess you could call mm. them, um, joining up with us. And it, it's a perfect solution for them. They, they'll still be members. They'll still be platinum, you know, frequent flyers. They, unfortunately, will never cover the network that Qantas and Virgin can cover. We, we, mm. We're first to admit that. But we're providing an, an unreal solution for those incredibly busy, time-critical or time-conscious um, CEOs and managers. Surfair have been doing it for a few years in the States. The idea, yep. I'm guessing, came from there. Yeah. Been... We, we, tell us about the moment where you and your other two business partners kind of gone, huh, let's bring it to Australia. I wish I had a really good story about it, but there isn't. <laughs> um, so I, I've been toying with the idea for about 18 months myself um, and started to get the wheels in motion uh, about 18 months ago. I met up with Alexander, who's one of the co-founders, only about six months ago. And um, no. we... we we both had the same vision and, and we clicked. Like When you um, say you met up, like yep. what did you send a tweet going, gee, wouldn't it be good to have an all-you-can-fly airline? <laughs> yeah, he, so obviously my, my closer network on LinkedIn knew that I was I was trying to build something great in Australia. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously from, from watching Surfair and putting our own little 
twist to it um, by changing aircraft types and other small things. Uh, so he just reached out and said, hey, I, I've been toying with this idea as well. Let's meet. Um, we clicked. And, and when you're trying to build a founding team, we're, we're both lateral thinkers. We think incredibly differently to one another. Mm-hmm. And um, it was only about a month ago we got Ivan on board and, and he's got an incredible background in technology. He was 2IC of one of Australia's uh, most prominent technology companies, um, Red Bubbles. So, oh, wow. Yeah, so we've got an incredibly talented tech guy with us as well and we're just about to finalise our fourth co-founder who's got some serious uh, background in an Australian airline as well. Oh, nice. What's your yeah. background? Everything. Um, so <laughs> I been in aviation since I was 13, nine months. Don't tell anyone except your <laughs> listeners, but I had to lie about my age because I wanted to work so bad. Um, Flying? Uh, I've got my pilot's licence. I've, I've worked in baggage. I've refuelled planes. I've uh, man, uh, helped manage airports. Oh, now it's all a, coming together. You're the, you are going to be doing everything. This is how you can, do, this is how you can offer this service. Uh, yeah, One minute I'm going everything. to be looking out of the plane seeing you load the luggage. The next That's minute it. I'll be looking in the cockpit and you there's Luke you give do, me the right? wave. Yeah. Yeah, get, get the grind on. Um, so, yeah, I, I was a network operations controller for Rex as well at 19. So a 19-year-old was calling the shots on 34 planes at the time in three, four states. Um, I've, I've spent time in the Air Force, which Alex has as well. He was He's an ex-Air Force pilot. And, um, so so what also... have you got to do? What, what have all you blokes got to do? Yep. I mean, feel free to share some numbers, but effectively you are giving birth to an airline. What does that involve? A lot of time, probably a lot of money. Well, you'd be surprised. So this is this is where a bit of a bit of a different uh, take to it comes in with with this hybrid airline. I like to call it. So we're pre-selling memberships right now. We went to market uh, yesterday, which everyone or a lot of people would have seen in the media. Yeah. And we're pre-selling memberships. So we're going out there saying who would be interested in joining us, and we've had an incredible response. How many already. you sold? Uh, I don't say numbers. It's it's definitely a lot more than what we expected. Is, is it ten or two hundred? It's not two hundred, but we're we're climbing. Nice. We're on our way yeah, up. Yeah. So, um, at several hundred, we'll launch, and from the join fees and from some of our own capital, we'll have enough to actually. I hate the pun, but get in the air uh, and, and get <laughs> this on. thing airborne. <laughs> Mate, dad jokes are my that's my uh, space. Can you just sorry, step I'll, I'll leave them to yeah, you. Yeah. That's cool, fine. Call your jet, son. Exactly right. So, you know, Richard Branson always said to make a million dollars in the airline industry, you need to start with a billion. Yeah, right. A bit like sailing. Exactly right. So, That's so what why... you've done, this is clever. You have gone and gone, okay, we've got to get um, X number of members to sign up with a thousand bucks. Mind you, yep. you can need a lot of thousand dollar bills in order to start an airline. But then the committing 2,550 bucks, what, for, uh, do you have to sign up? Is there a minimum like three months or something that they've got to commit? We are asking for two months up front, but then from that it's month to month. And and for those who Whoa. who love what we do and want to commit longer term, we'll look after them. Yeah, right. Because that's added a surety for us, but we know each month exactly what, where our numbers are at. Hey, guys, I'm chatting with Luke Hampshire, the co-founder of Fly Airly, Australia's newest airline. Hey, before I ask him about the costs associated with launching what is a very, very big idea, here's a word from a company that wants to see your business fly. (laughs) See what I did there? Support for this show comes from NetRegistry. Recently, I was Skyping it up with Verity Ma, their chief marketing officer, when the line deteriorated. She thought it may be because she had loads of browsers open, at which point I'm like, why so many browsers? Well, because websites appear differently on different browsers. So if I run multiple, then I can get a sense of how our websites are tracking across different browsers and customers' websites. Net Registry, where attention to detail rules. Visit netregistry.com.au forward slash Timbo for a website that works on, well, all browsers. Support for this show comes from Key Person of Influence, a business accelerator program that reeks of success. I asked co-founder Glenn Carlson to share some breakthrough results. Every day, 
I'm seeing people posting evidence of the transformation from them being an operator to being a key person of influence. So, you know, as a result of them publishing a book, they're getting invited to speak at global conferences that they've only ever dreamed of attending, let alone being a speaker at. Or, you know, uh, an organization decides to buy 3,000 of their new product, which they've just created that they would never have been able to take 3,000 orders if they were just a single operator. Um, or their pitch, getting them into, you know, a, a deal that is 10 times bigger. And, and like, we see evidence of this every single day. And I look at this every single day to the point where it's become the water I'm swimming in. KPI, where the results swim, I mean speak for themselves. For a free hard copy of their Amazon bestseller, visit keypersonofinfluence.com forward slash Timbo. And now back to interrogating Luke about what this fly early idea is costing. So we're using a management company for, we'll dry lease planes from them. Uh, they'll manage our pilots. They will manage insurances as well. So it's all above board. We're at the same regulatory level as any other commercial airline in Australia. So we're operating with a, a operator that has an AOC certificate, which CASA, the, the authority in Australia, uh, give you. Mm-hmm. And then to one-up that, we've got uh, an operator who has what we call RPT or an RPT accreditation, which means that we can fly like an airline or, or to the standard of an airline. And when you compare uh, that to, say, uh, just your general scenic flight operator out of Airs Rock, Mm-hmm. Um, the maintenance is far more strict, the reporting, the crewing standards, everything goes up. So this is the best way we can ensure that safety and, and uh, peace of mind for our members. Clever. Yep. Clever. Interesting that you, uh, on a month-by-month month membership basis, you kind of, you're never really going to know. We're putting it to our members. We're saying if you give us a chance, mm. we'll prove it to you that, this, that you'll never want to fly commercial on our routes again. Yeah. Um, yes, it's a gamble, and, and yes, people have said you're crazy. This is madness, but we really feel that we we've got a solution in place that that will deliver uh, time on time again. Whether you're flying out of Bankstown or Canberra or Essendon, it'll mm. be the same consistent, attentive service. Luke, you launched it yesterday. You, you, <laughs> you're looking around at your mates now, your business partners, going, "This is real, boys." What what is it what part of this business of, of Fly Early gets you absolutely excited beyond all possibilities and what part of it makes you actually shit yourself? All of it. <laughs> um, we <laughs> sat around the table this morning, you know, frantically responding to emails. People and like me. Chatting to me- yeah, many people, um, getting, you know, calling our members and everything like that. We looked around and we said, what have we done? Mm. <laughs> we've, we've got to do this now. Um I love every part of it. I love the fact that Australia is getting on board. Um, I love the fact that the media are really enjoying what we're offering. And, and I'm loving the, the naysayers and the negative feedback because yeah. we know that this will work. Um, obviously, we wouldn't be putting our own capital into it. We'd be trying to leech off someone else. We're, um, we're dead serious about this and we, we feel that Australia is ready for it. The states have done it. We, we've watched them from a distance for the last three, four years. Um, Australia's ready. There's 9 million passengers who fly Melbourne, Sydney every year. I'm going to push you a bit more. Yeah, every, I, I can imagine every bit of this gets you excited. What part of it does kind of, you know, give you goosebumps in, in a kind of like scared kind of way? In a scared kind of way. <laughs> um, we're quite young, ambitious people. Yeah, so yeah, yeah, right. You, 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 it's all upside. Yeah, exactly. I haven't had time to sit down and go, geez, what really freaks me out about Good. this? I think it's, it's not necessarily being freaked out by it, but the fact that so many people have already joined up and said, you know what, we're going to give you a crack. Yeah, we right. believe what you're offering is is cool and, and we're on board. So it's more of a fact like, you know what, we've got to deliver now. Um, are are you looking what... to an Uber or an Airbnb or are you just looking at Surf Air as, as a kind of role model? Oh, look, Surf Air has been a pinnacle for us, mm. uh, especially for me, uh, watching it since it started. They, they've really gotten things right now. Have you flown um, it? I have not. Never been to the states. Um, Get out of here! I, no, I open to invites actually. If they, Mate, from surf air listens. well, I mean it's all expense, but that you've got to get there. No, I do. I know. Um, and actually, Alexander's heading there next week or the week right. after, and he's actually going to meet up with surf air as well yep. and, and check it all out. So, um, surf air has been the pinnacle, but I just love watching Australian um, tech companies really starting to make an impact. Canva. Mm. Is, is a really Canva, good one that, that we've just sat back and said, you know what, these guys are doing it right. Vino Mofo, 
Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. One of my very first ad- guests about seven years ago. Justin or Andre? Uh, Andre. Yeah. I'll tell you what, if I could base my business on those guys and have such a culture and such an unbelievable customer experience, we've, we, we're, we're going to be pretty happy. Well, well hey, listen, to, yep. to you've, those two words, culture, customer experience, like yep. look deep, deep, deep into what those guys are doing. And look, and the third thing that Andre and the guys at Vino Mofo get right is a brand personality. They, Absolutely. They create this emotional attachment to their to their to anyone who visits their website. I mean, look at the name just to start with. You exactly know? right. Um, uh, it's brilliant. Um, their so, story, their tenacity, everything's yep. just – they're kicking goals. And, and yep. now that they're going global – um, yeah, it's just fantastic to see. Again, Canva's another great one that's just really starting to to get out there. Atlassian, you know, they're absolutely smashing. Any it. thoughts so, of reaching out to those people and sort of kind of you know meeting once a once a month or something? I would love to. Mm. Yeah, the, we're, we're working out of Inspire Nine in Richmond at the moment. And I know Vino Mofo's oh, nearby, wow. so I might. Oh, if you, to mate, I, can, I can introduce you to Andre. You let me know on that one. But a um, couple more questions. Yeah, sure. I'm so excited by this. I that's think, good. Uh, like it's just I just love new business ideas that have not been tried or heard of before. I mean, honestly, yep. I was flicking through Twitter last night and I yep. saw this, and I'm just like, bang, brilliant! You know, look, you've got it's, you still got to make it work, but oh, absolutely, but, the, the the job's only just starting. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, and good on you for embracing it, for saying even to a little bloke like me saying yes to an interview because again, this kind of exposure, I don't mean on this show, but just the exposure you're getting from the media, that's not yep. necessarily going to last forever either. So you kind absolutely of make not. A, while the sun shines. Want to talk about marketing? Yep. Um, want a broad question about how are you going to go about marketing early? But I've got a question about your your choice of domain name. You could. Have gone with well, early.com and yep. early.com.au uh, are owned, are parked. Yep. Um, you did you tap the owners on the shoulder and say, How much do you want? No, no, we um wanted to distinguish what we are. Early could be confused for early beach up in Queensland. Uh, I think there's an early in Victoria as well, a town. Um, we wanted to distinguish the fact that we're we're flying, uh, so fly early sort of made sense. Fair enough. So that's that's really the only thought process we had with that. It's, it was available. Uh, it was Did, .com, so it gives us, you know, we, we've definitely got our eyes on a couple of markets abroad. Yeah, right. Um, something that we won't really tap into until we perfect what we're doing in Australia. Gotcha. Um, but, yeah, it, it, it just seemed right, flyelly.com. Yeah, it's, no, it's I, sort I, of like I that's what you're doing. I agree. I, I mean, I don't know. If, if, if the money was there, you'd almost want to protect yourself by owning um, flyelly.com.au and flyelly. Um, Dot com, uh, and early, so I should say early.com, but, you know, yeah, yeah, there's plenty of things you can spend your money on, right? Well, we've got a couple of planes. <laughs> oh, the first one's on its way, but, yeah, we, we've got other things to spend cash on. And Tell me uh, from a marketing point of view, yeah. uh, and I've just I've had a flick around your social media activity, which is yep. kind of pretty naive at the moment, if you you know, with, with all respect. There's a yes. bit of work to be done. What's, what's your plan around marketing? Because I'm, I look at a business like this and you, mm-hmm. you, you, I don't think it's overly expensive, but it's a high-involvement purchase decision. Yep. Um, it's an airline after all. Mm-hmm. And I think your job of needing to build a really solid brand, both visually, uh, in words, and just in, in everything you do, is got to be is got to be really good. We're growing, you know. Um, w- this was just a crazy little idea six months ago. Um, so so we're developing with the actual business itself, and that, as we speak of our brand, um, that that's growing like a, like a, a baby would. Um, as far as marketing is concerned, we're such a niche service. Um, we're not out there to the masses. So it does make marketing extra challenging, but we're starting to do the right thing. So, you know, you profile who who you think would be or want to be part of this. Mm. Where where are they? What are they reading? What are they looking at? Um, you know, And, you know, the world's going so digital, it turns out a lot of our interest is going to come from printed media. Huh. Um, Why do you say that? I wish I knew. It, it just, is that just a response to the last twenty four hours, or is it something you've um, thought about? No, more something deeply? I've been researching, and, and we're in a particular um, magazine next month uh, from the eighteenth of February. And Qu- Qantas in flight magazine. <laughs> it'd be quite funny. CEO if you could run magazine. An ad. You could, um, oh, yeah, okay. It'd be quite funny if you could run an ad on Qantas in flight and Virgin Australia in flight. But <laughs> yeah, probably wouldn't get through. <laughs> no, I don't think it would. Um, CEO magazine. CEO yeah. magazine. Where, 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 where are our members? They're CEOs. They're the, as I call them, the movers and shakers. They're, they're making things happen. They're calling the shots. Um, 
that, that, that you know, it's a printed mm. media and, and I've been laughed at for wanting to do it, but that's, that's where our guys are. Um, Interesting. They're reading the magazine. That magazine, funnily enough, is in the Qantas Lounge and Virgin Lounge. Yeah, it is. Um, it is. It's in the Hilton. It, it's it's exactly where we want our message to be uh, broadcasted. Oh, yeah, um, I, I hear. I think that yep. theoretically that makes a lot of sense. Uh, yep. I'd be interested to see whether actual ads in a magazine in it, it's the right environment, but it's an ad. It's a printed ad. And how? how what about you? How do you respond to printed ads in magazines you read? Well, ours looks pretty good, so <laughs> it, it, would, it would catch my <laughs> eye. Yes. But, of course, um, it does. You have to look at, you know, a social media, media strategy. So where are our members? Are they on Facebook? No, probably not. Um, they're too busy. They yeah. might be on Twitter. They might be on LinkedIn. Another another form of our marketing is referrals. So we've got a great referral um, yep. rewards program that we're going to be running and already has taken effect. We've already got members saying to their friends, hey, you've got to check these guys out. Um, yeah, you'll I get $500 credit on your account every great. for every yeah, successful Yeah, I, I think there's that record. kind of thing where... I think the answer to the marketing question is that you've got to be in a lot of places. And I think the fact that you are so niche is actually an advantage because... Um, it helps. It helps. Yeah. It, you know, it might actually save money because we've got to really refine who we're talking to and where we're putting our cash. I interviewed um, a dentist many oh, about three or four years ago. What he did yeah. is he, he shut his doors, uh, took his shingle down, didn't shut his, didn't close his business, took his shingle down, got a private number, sacked 75% of his clients, gave <laughs> the t- remaining 25% of his clients two business cards each, and he said, yeah. please give these to two other people like yourself. Yep, exactly right. And they all talk. Uh the friends of CEOs and managers or other CEOs and managers. And that's what we're, tr- that's the type of community we're trying to create on board our planes as well. Yeah. It's like a big, big board meeting uh, on a plane. Well, I, I got that sense when I was reading the press that you've got today. There's a, one of the upsides. Okay. There's no lounge, there's no points, but there is this kind of, you have the opportunity of building a very tight knit tribe and mm-hmm. almost, you know, I look, I look at it in a year's time and maybe if you were to say, you know what, you know, people, someone says to me, who do you fly with? I say, I fly early. That positions me as someone in this kind of little click and that little click are people who are successful, who, mm-hmm. you know, are movers and shakers, want to get stuff done and that yeah. would be an amazing brand attribute, wouldn't it, you know? It's something we're aiming for. It's it's one of our uh one of our largest priorities or, or, or it's something we're definitely striving to achieve. They're finding it in the States. People are doing business deals on the plane. They didn't know each other from a bar mm. of soap the week before, uh, but they got chatting on the flight and, and all of a sudden a business deal was made. Made it an eight-seater with the seats that pivot. There'll be, there'll be deals flying out the window. That's it. You can, <laughs> you can uh, unfold the nice mahogany table and oh, um, here we go. do a bit of work. Oh, what? No, that's exactly Rockstar what it is. Stuff. I love it. It is. And I should clarify as yeah. well, when you say there's no lounge, there is a lounge. So uh, members will be parking at the front of our terminal and um, hopping straight into a lounge where there's drinks, there's snacks, and the concierge will greet you as well. So it's not as if, uh-huh. you, it's not as if you're sitting on, uh, you know, a, a pressed metal seat yeah, right. waiting for the plane to rock up. Um, you're treated quite well uh, in our lounges that, that have Wi-Fi in, in there as well. Um, so we'll be really looking after our members from the minute they uh, – arrived the minute they land. Well, I think this is all part of your marketing challenge going forward and you, you made, it's all in your head. You've got to get it out there. Have you got a plan? Are you going to put a marketing person on? Are you going to appoint an agency? Are you, the three or four of you, going to bumble your way through all this? What? what? Um, well, I've got quite a cr- uh, creative background. I started a little business with a friend of mine, um, a, a creative agency. So design, web, et cetera, is sort of something that I'm, I'm mm-hmm. quite happy with. The three of us together have been going pretty well so far with where we need to be and what we need to say. Um, I dare say down the track we'll be getting a CMO uh, or someone of the like to to be in charge of marketing. Um, But right now we just feel like we've got to get our story out there. Uh, I guess you've got to find the people to generate a new audience in which to replicate as far as, uh, you know, Facebook ads and Google ads are concerned. If we can find that initial audience then replicate it yeah, by yeah, the, totally. the clever ways Google does, I, I, we can I, then further find out. And I can't help but think, and going back to the Vino Mofo example, and there's a, a few other people that I've interviewed on this show, one of the things that they've done and I reckon you've got to do is create this amazing customer experience yep. that is so shareable. You know, like Absolutely. You, you want me or me as in a client to walk off your plane and just on the way home ring my mate and go, you're not you going to believe, believe this. Exactly right. <laughs> we, we, and one of our members, uh, 
went golfing, had a few friends with him who are obviously in a similar position to him, and, and he said, you've got to check out this idea. We haven't even uh, flown him yet, and he's just wrapped with, with – yeah. Our, our proposition that he's already starting to tell other friends to get on board. Um, it's, it's a very personalised experience. The, the concierge is going to greet you. Good morning, Tim. Welcome. Um, they'll, they'll, it's, it's a very bespoke service. So they'll know, the concierges will know what your favourite snacks are, what your drinks are. They'll make sure it's nicely stocked for you. Nice. But, it, but it's beyond that. It, it's I need an Uber when I land in Bankstown. No worries. We'll organise it for you. Yep. Uh, I need a rental car when I land in Essendon. No worries. We'll organise it for you. Uh, a lunch reservation, a hotel reservation. It's we basically want to take care of any logistical issues that generally take up time. Do you ever think you'd own an airline? No, <laughs> <laughs> not not in a million years. It's, it's something you want to do as a kid, and you know, working at a small airport. My manager actually wanted to to build an airline one day, um, and just couldn't. And yeah, it's just sort of stuck with me ever since bit of a personal attachment to achieving such a goal. So we're not there yet. As I said, we've, we've got a heap of work to do, but we're absolutely wrapped with with where we're at already. Luke, uh, good luck with it, mate. I, I love the story. I love the idea. I'd love to think that this show uh, in some way in the future and, and even doing this interview can help you guys um, grow because it'll be a great story, a great Australian um, entrepreneurial story yep. uh, and a disruptive one at that. If people want to um, sign up, how do they yep. do it? They can head over to flyairly.com or they can call 1-800-FLY-AIRLY if they've got any uh, questions. And um, we'll be more than happy to get you on board, Tim, and, and, and give you a bit of a taste for what we're offering. Careful. Careful what you ask for. Or careful what you wish for. Good on you, mate. Thanks, Luke. No worries, Tim. Thanks. Oh, what a good fella. Hey? Luke Hampshire, fly early. He's so good, he even invited me on the inaugural promo flight in a month's or in a month or two's time. Gotta love that. So I will be recording a show from 35,000 feet up in the air. Does that mean I qualify for the Flying High Club? Is it the Flying High? What's that thing where you do you do it in the sky? Fly, I don't know. If I got it right, it doesn't matter. I'll assume I qualify. <laughs> Looking forward to that show. Hey, uh, would love to share my top three, and I'm going to call these attention grabbers, previously known as learnings, from that fireside chat with Luke. And these are brought to you by the very good folk at Net Registry who get your online marketing sorted and the very good folk at Key Person of Influence, an entrepreneurial program for you, the motivated business owner, who is ready to take their business to the next level. Learning number one. I've got to love that membership pricing model. Spoken about it before on the show, and I need you to ask yourself, what can you charge a monthly recurring fee for, right? Recurring income. It's a good thing. Learning number two, ask how you can disrupt your industry. Branson's entire strategy is based around challenging the status quo of industries. And an effective exercise for you to do again is to list all the conventions of your industry, then flip them 180 degrees, who knows what crazy ideas may show themselves. And don't let the naysayers go, they're crazy ideas, you can never do them. Yes, you could. You know why most people don't do crazy ideas? Because they think they're crazy. Sometimes they're just brilliant. Learning number three. Now, i got to say, the warning bells sounded when Luke suggested he was a bit of a creative at heart and would be tackling a lot of the marketing himself. Oh, jeez, Lukey. Now, I, I get that cash flow is everything in a business, so don't get me wrong, and marketing can cost, although not as much as you think, right? A lot of this new world marketing, this new age marketing, it's not as expensive as we all think. But I also know how important it is to get those critical touch points right when launching a business, particularly a business that has such a high involvement purchase as does Fly Early. So, oh, Lukey, it was a bit of an attention grabber for me, mate. I would be inclined to go and employ a marketing agency or expert, if I were you. Maybe listen to a few past episodes of this show. Uh, number four, I know, I, know, I know there was only three, but I've got to add number four. I'm a bit concerned about his full-page ad in the CEO magazine. Hmm? You know my views on advertising. 
opportunity cost and all. Let's see. When I'm 35,000 feet with him in the air, I'll ask him how that ad went. I'm happy to eat humble pie. Hey, what was your big takeaway? Head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. Go to the search box. Look for episode 293. Leave me a comment. Thanks. Richard Branson once said, if someone offers you an amazing opportunity but you're not sure you can do it, say yes. Then learn how to do it later. Got to love that quote from old Dickie Branson. I wonder if anyone calls him Dick. Probably don't. He doesn't look like a dick. He can act like a dick, but he doesn't look like a dick. Looks like a Richard. Sir Richard. He's been knighted and all. I shouldn't talk like that about someone so important. Hey, I've been bribed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bribed by a listener. Also known as Seated. Long-time listener, very long-time listener, James Axisa. Can't pronounce his surname. Axisa? A-X-I-S-A. It's a tough one. James from uh, baybeans.com.au has sent me some coffee. And it is red hot coffee. Gee, it's nice. I think it's a little Guatemalan blend for my Ranchilio espresso machine at home. Now, uh, this is not just a blatant plug because James has been doing some great marketing for a number of years now. And he sent me a note. He said, hey, Timbo, just strolling down memory lane and note that these industry expert videos I created have racked up almost 100,000 views between them on the back of your encouragement in 2011. Now, I remember seeing this first video James did, which was how to steam milk, right? Basic, basic topic, basically shot on James's iPhone, and it's cranked 62,000 views. And he sold a whole lot of coffee on the back of it. He's also got a couple of other videos, how to siphon coffee, how to make espresso, One's with 9,000 views, the other's with 18,000 views. Team, they're shot on his iPhone, right? And not only that, on one of his videos, he receives a text message and it goes beep, you know, vibrates, but he doesn't stop. He just keeps being helpful. He focuses on sharing his knowledge. He doesn't worry about, well, he worries about the quality. They're not badly shot videos, but they're not Hollywood productions. And he's got lots of views and he's selling lots of coffee as a result, which I love. So well done to you, James. He says, congratulations on your continuing, on continuing to pumping out marketing gold. Well, thank you, James. Thanks for the coffee too. You know what his title is? CEO, Chief Espresso Officer. Love it. Bit of humour, bit of personality in your marketing message. James, you're doing great things, mate. Baybeans.com.au team is where you want to go. And if you've done something amazing with your marketing, maybe as a result of listening to this show, send me an email. Tim at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com and you never know, I might read it on the show. Right, oh team, we're nearly there. You still with me? Hands up. Hands up if you're still with me. Mm. Right, oh, hands up if you're not. <laughs> Doesn't really work that way. Hey, yeah, uh, plenty of marketing gold coming your way. Next episode. Check this out. I have a chat with this bloke, Bobby Edwards. He's the creator of a, well, it's a stool, and it's called Squatty Potty. <laughs> it's a stool you put in your toilet. It's, uh, it makes going to the toilet easier, put it that way. Do me a favour before you listen to that episode and watch the viral video that Bobby has created. It went live three months ago. Just Google Squatty Potty Unicorn and you will see it. It's had 65 million views. Yeah, yeah, 65 million views in the past three months and increased his turnover by a lazy 600%. So more on Squatty Potty next week. Plus, we reconnect with past guest and now YouTube sensation. Well, she was back then as well. Melissa Maker of Clean My Space. Love Melissa. She's on in a couple, two, maybe three weeks' time. Hey, be sure to use Net Registry if you need a website or to get your website found. There are exclusive listener packages over at netregistry.com.au forward slash Timbo, including a $79 a month do-it-for-me website package. It's a ripper. 
And be sure to sign up for one of Key Person of Influence Brand Accelerator Days. You can find out more about them over at keithpersonofinfluence.com forward slash Timbo. And you can also grab their book as well. They'll post it to you. Gotta love that. Hey, a big hug goes out to Daryl Misson for putting this show together each and every week. While I saw him sipping on the pina coladas, pina? Pina coladas, Daz is busily putting together each and every episode just for you. And all the music you hear is written, played, and sung by rock star, another rock star, Lockie Dolly. If you need a speaker for an upcoming event, I'm all yours. Check out timreed.com.au. And if you want to surround yourself with other motivated business owners like yourself, head over to crankmymarketing.com. 69 bucks a month, 30 day, no questions asked, money back guarantee if you don't like it, and you will be inside what is a forum of people who love to talk about marketing and growing their business. Whew, I think we're there. Until next week, I am Timbo Reed. always have been, always will be. May your marketing be the best marketing. Bye for now.